Hey guys, so today we have someone new on, uh, a new voice actor, uh, kind of like Garbo, but different. Yes, he's another American, so for all, like, and, and I can already hear the, no, not another American, but like, I, I don't mind the American accents, you know, so I quite enjoy them. And also the type of stuff that I want to expand into doing, I think requires American accents a lot of the time. Like, I do want to do a lot more K stuff, but us being stupid uh, uh, Europers, you know, it just doesn't work very well. I think K is just such an American board. Having a European um, no lead over anything is just... It just doesn't work very well. So the guy that we've got is Furious Skelton. Well, that's what you guys will know him from anyway. It is the player, like the player character, Furious Skelton. Um, he's a bit awkward, a bit new to it. You know, this is his first time ever trying something like this. But he is very interested in it. Um, his audio isn't quite the best, but like, you know, all that stuff can be improved over time. But I want you guys to like, you know, really say this, like, try not to be nasty to the Perry thing. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's awkward. It's not easy. It is something new. And, uh, you know, it is, it is difficult doing stuff like this. You know, even if it is just voiceovers. But, um, it is new to anyone. And like, you know, you guys let us know what you think of him down below because it really will depend what you guys think if we're gonna, Keep going with them or not. Um, just try to try not to be too mean to the poor fellow because, like, I think he did actually a really good job for a first attempt. I think there's a lot of potential in him, so I really want to hear what you guys think. And let's just get into this. Hello, it's your boy Medivac guy. I'm gonna be doing some commando reading, so uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. You are an officer in the security of the Fortune Infinite Tower. It goes up. It goes down. Really, we have no fucking idea how it works, but it's based on the boards of this forsaken website. Tell us about your loadouts and escapades. Ant-Man is dead, motherfucker. Edition. Floor 6.2, 10 to the 23rd. One of D's quarantine zones. Brap fetishes. Air is impossible to see due to all the farts. Have to rely on melee. Using a gun here would blow the entire floor up. God, how I wish I could do that. But security would cut my benefits if I did that. Plague Doctor Mask, I store from one of the X floors, is the only thing keeping me alive at this point. The floors and walls are all flesh. All anime girls. Fucking D. It's like the second to last level and blood but even more disgusting as each step causes the floor to release an orgasmic howl. At least there's no gill beasts. Apparently fish monsters is where they draw the line for now. Suddenly, a one-armed monstrosity crawls towards me, one of the fabled primordial coomers. I freeze, knowing such beasts are immortal and short-minded due to their obsessive need to coom. The beast stops short of me and looks at me dead in the eyes. His bloodshot retinas staying completely still. D do you know the time, officer? It said, drawing a sickening sh snort from the air. 321, sir. Now move along, please. The beast's eyes widened. Oh man, it's been 20 whole seconds since I last coomed. I have to get on that. Uh, sure, just do. The coomer laid his atrophied left hand onto me. <laughs> it looked more like spoiled jerky than an arm. You will serve as my toy, it said, <laughs> daintily squeezing down on my suit. How about no? Then I guess it'll be Guru this time, it snickered, raising its roided doom fist at me. I don't get paid enough to deal with this, I said, lunging to the elevator. No! Stay! It shrieked as it crawled at me. I have something much hotter for you, I smirked, tossing an incendiary grenade in the air as the elevator to the door shut. As I rode down, I heard a muffled blast. Well, there goes my Christmas bonus. Be night, Anon. Getting shit-faced. Feel bad, Dot Gif. Practically blacking out at this point. I remember something the barman said. Something commandant something something gift something room? Stumbled to room. Kick door down. Look around. CRPG on bed in a box of rockets. Remember the ant cults. Grab RPG and run out the door. Start running up random staircases. Feel something guiding me. God? No. The Commandant! Kick down the door. See ant cultists. Scream fucking heretics! And fire! Blast rips everyone in the room apart. 
Turn and head to the next room. I'm coming for you, heretics. B-250. It's been a while, hasn't it? My friends, Mercy and I are doing okay. And my cut-off PKM hasn't gone dry since the Ant-Man got with the sacrifice of our beloved Commandant. Flipping this 54R cartridge in my hand doesn't feel right as I swish the maker's mark in my mouth. The warmth of the tub does little to soothe my existentialism either. There isn't such a thing as a long-lived stalker, and it doesn't feel right. I miss that goofy fucker. Be me. Basement security. I'd rather be in hell. Hell is actually 30 to the 7th times 29.62 floors above basement level. Saint himself won't chase you down here. My loadout is a 1911 with a single round. It looks so beautiful. But my job isn't done yet. I have to find the last guy they sent down here. I have to get the C4 off of whatever's left of him. I have to find the bottom and collapse this abomination and degenerates that it's sheltered. But how much further did the last guy make it? How much further can I go? I have come from bad place. Please help me. Flooring is gassed. I need medical attention now. BMU guard. Be much time after the great sacrifice of the Commandant. I've kept the tower stable as I could to honor his last wish. Nothing too big has happened since the Ant War. Still having nightmares about those little fuckers. Still shed many tears whenever I remember that glorious Anons gave their life for the Slash Tower. Ave Nexalea. That feel when pulling security on the trash sub-basement with a small squad of guys. At first I thought the shoot that everything that moves rule was a bit counterintuitive. How are we security if we're just killing everyone? Then, I realized we're not guarding them. We're guarding everyone else from them. This place is the closest thing to hell on this earth. I heard one squad got jumped about a week ago. When they sent in a retrieval team, they refer refused to bring back the bodies. Just used flamethrowers on them right then and there. From what I hear, the dude had a dozens of dead rats shoved in their asses. Floor 69696969. Nice. <laughs> Socks containment floor. Got a report of a disturbance. Here we go again. Step out of the elevator. It's pitch black. Smells like hot pockets and cum. H Hello? Anyone home? Hear a creeping sound. Slowly, a thousand small yellow dots appear from the darkness. Notice the dots are in pairs. Oh shit, dot PNG. They're all eyes. A small, frail voice in the darkness. Um, hello, Anon? I'm, uh, I'm new here. Can, can you rate me, please? Illuminated by a spotlight before me is a stinky neckbeard, mulling as hard as he can. Reply, uh, IDK, 2 out of 10. Then the damn silence breaks into a crescendo. Rate me! Rate me! Rate me! Rate! Okay, I'm not reading all of that, but you get the point. A thousand overlapping voices scream. The lights flash on. A million naked people masturbating furiously, screaming, Rate me! Fucking so Bunch of weirdos. Leave. Recommending exterminus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, uh, I would definitely, uh, yeah, no, no. Security guard's right on that one. Just, just fucking napalm the whole floor. Call it good. Whatever. Be me chilling out in an integer number floor. No clip through a wall into a dingy room with peeling yellow wallpaper. Post-it note on the wall behind me says, Welcome to floor... Pi? Not only... Is the floor number irrational, but it's also not a real number. Here's strange noises that X mentioned. Fuck. The good news is that I had my gear on me when I no-clipped it into the, in through the wall. Wish me luck, boys. Just a quick sidebar here. I'd, I'd definitely say that uh, sometimes there's beauty and simplicity. Like, this is beautiful right here. Everybody knows what the back rooms is. Um, for those of you that are like really big into this X shit... Uh, the good news is there's actually uh, supposed to be a couple um, Backrooms games that are supposed to be coming out soon. Um, they look pretty interesting, but yeah. Floor 256. The 22-year-old secure fag living alone. Parents went on 
expedition to floor 262. Home is haunted. Apparently the last person to live here was a 22-year-old female. Her parents were stalkers in the Great War of floor 268. I don't know how she died. Every night she appears in a flowing white dress over my bed. Maybe it used to belong to her. Feel overwhelming aura of sadness and despair. I've seen spirits of sadness in my dreams. They only want to feel loved and appreciated because they were lonely when alive. I feel pretty lonely too. I'm a security fag and all, but I need this job and a sense of duty. But I miss my parents. Being alone at night fucking sucks. At least I have ghost babe. One night I feel ghost babe manifest. Feel an urge to go somewhere. Look around. Nothing but the walls and a painting of... Well, I don't even know. Parents told me to never look behind it. Said whatever it is behind it will certainly end my life. Had the urge a few times. Fought it because I want to live and experience life. Ghost babe. She wants me to look behind it. Give in. I trust her. I've known her presence for years. Take the painting off the brackets. Set it down gently on my bed. Behind the painting, it's picture frame. It's her. With my parents? Look at the back of the frame. Carved into the back as if as if it were scratched in. Elena. Suddenly get dizzy. Like, really dizzy. Collapse to the floor. At first it was all black, but then... Trees? I know this floor. It's 268. 268 fought a war with 267 over the resources among the trees. 268 won, but at a great cost to the trees themselves. Ghost Babe appears. She's in her iconic white dress. But she's not a ghost here. She's a beautiful... She's beautiful. Long, dark blonde hair, and greenish blue eyes. She's almost a brunette. Hear a woman's voice. It sounds like the softest voice you've ever heard, but softer. Just like the spirits of sadness from my dreams, it echoes through the trees around us. You know, I would have expected you to move floors after what you've been through, but you stayed, even after all these years of me floating at your bedside. My bedside. You put your trust in someone who you, whom never gave you their name, or even spoke to you once. You only just learned my name. Why didn't you leave before? I begin talking. The trees echo my words in hushed whispers. 268 is no ordinary floor. I know being alone isn't easy. You went to 268 to look for your family, but only found trees. The trees were your family all along. Your parents fought in the war, but you didn't know that people who fight for trees become the trees when they die. You give your life to the trees, and the trees give it back. I take a deep breath. I wake up. My bedroom is just as it was when I collapsed. I take the picture frame, replace the painting on the wall, and head for the elevator. Punch in 268. Elevator opens to 268. At first I see only a hallway, but there is a light at the end. It opens up to a grand forest. I look at the picture frame of Elena and my parents, close my eyes and take a deep breath, and open my eyes again. Elena appears as a ghost, but gets more opaque. Finally, Elena is as she was when I passed out, white dress and all. No shoes, she's completely barefoot, gently gliding with each footstep, almost as if she were weightless. She has the most graceful stride, assented with dark purple painted toenails. No, I'm not a foot fag, this is important to the story. I look around the trees, and I notice one is not like the others. It is... One tree that has split into two, shaped like a Y. Each mega branch twirls around the other as if it were dancing. Fine carved into the bark is the letter E. This tree was once Elena's parents. They must have been fighting back to back, twirling around in a dance just before they died. It would have been a glorious sight to behold. They were together in their very last moments, and died in soft embrace. These trees felt deeply distraught and made the couple, couple one of them, to live on as an eternal pair. I place the picture frame at the base of the tree, close my eyes, take a deep breath, and open them again. Elena is knelt before the frame at the tree. I kneel beside her. Elena, your parents were once great warriors in the War of 268. Their love for each other strengthened their resolve to defend the sacred floor. When they could fight no longer, they ended with a loving embrace. The trees knew you would come back looking for them. 
you miss them greatly, sadness building up in your soul. Elena, you died of a broken heart. My parents found an orphan child all those years ago and took you in. They could never love you like your real parents did, but they tried. But when you were 22, you made a hole in the wall and put this picture frame inside. You made a painting. You put all your sadness into it, all of your soul, and you covered the hole in the wall with it. And you ran away to find your real parents. But you got lost along the way. My parents wanted to fill the void that you left 22 years ago. You stuck around me because I was all you had. You made me dream of spirits and sadness so that maybe I could understand you and help you find your parents. But my parents didn't want to lose me like they lost you. So they hid you from me. Least I get lost too. But I can see clearly your spirit of sadness, Elena. And you need to move on. Your parents are here. And you need to join them. The trees say that they still love you very much. Elena begins to fade. Thank you for everything. I close my eyes, take a deep breath, and open them again. A new tree has appeared. Next to the one Elena knelt before. I give the new tree a hug and feel radiating warmth behind the bark. I pick up the picture frame again and start towards the elevator. The trees whisper, Two, five, six, eight. I stop and bow deeply and return to the elevator. Punch in 256. The end. Kudos to this guy. Very, very well written and executed story. Truly, truly a slice of life within the zone. Gods have chosen their champions to battle to the death. Luckily, they can resurrect them to fight and die again and again. In this fast-paced, hard-hitting fighting game, reading your opponent is as important as rolling your dice. Use different attacks and abilities, cut through your opponent, or drive them into a wall of spikes. Pit Fighter features easy rules with gorgeous miniatures suitable for any tabletop skirmish, RPG, or war game. Each battle takes only one to five minutes, perfect for a group of friends with some downtime on game night or when someone has to pause to take a call. B Floor 2. Floors mostly bombed out from the wars over who gets Floor 0. Me and my M1 carbine guarding some Psy eggheads. For autists who keep arguing whether or not Pi is exactly 3, they can work wonders worth hex hexamine. Egghead 1 climbs the stairs until he's about three quarters of the way up. I'm plinking at rats while they futz about with some kind of metal can. Please don't be a backpack nuke. Suddenly, Egghead 2 hands 1 a couple of leads, which he attaches to something in the wall. I ask Egghead 3 what he's doing. Well, if you weren't totally retarded, you'd know. Ah, thanks, Frank. Egg Eggheads 1 and 2 fucking book it. Egghead 3 follows. Can starts humming glows blue. My face when I'm suddenly standing next to an unshielded nuclear reactor. My face when I'm suddenly not and also up to my hips and dragon dildos. My face when eggheads just used me as a guinea pig. B floor E. One of those nasally fuckers calls my calm, asks if I'm alive. Call him a bitch fuck. Asks if I'm on floor two. No, I'm in your absent dad's gay porn studio. Tells me they're trying to get me out. Instead, discover irrational floors. Someone was here first. Fucking rift-walking assholes. This message won't make it, but I'll try anyway. Former X-Guard. Still technically am, but I'm sure they registered me KIA and gave my badge number to someone else by now. Not sure which floor. Got lost on the job like two weeks ago. Thanks, elevator. It's pretty dark. Occasionally find working power sources and plumbing. Overgrown with wild plants, which is strange for the lack of light, but these things stopped making sense long before this. Clocks don't work down here, analog or digital, everything else does. Layout changes when not looking. Several maps I made prove this. Backpack is mostly full of spam and 223. Skinwalkers and shapeshifters constantly attack me because of this. Haven't gone a single day without shooting one. I can tell the growth is coming from somewhere, been tracking it for miles. I was on my way to demolitions testing when all this happened. I have some pretty strong charges on me. Must have been God's plan. I'll get as close as I can to the source and detonate them. Seems like I have enough. I recommend that elevator 
756B by 10 to the third tower immediately, destroyed, and boarded. Would send coordinates, however, they're irrational. No extraction requested. Captain, yeah. Floor 10348 here. I'm all alone. Guys, the humming is getting louder by the week. There's something terrible happening above. I can see organic debris, and I don't want to further specify, uh, constantly falling by. God, make the humming stop. For the administration, there are a pair of giant boilers or pressure vessels of some sort located in a huge hall on floor 10330 to 10335. They are heavily corroded and springing leaks. I used to contain them before it became unworkable. Now the entire hall is slowly filling up with some kind of neurotoxic corrosive goo. It's just a matter of time before the bulkheads give, so I'm filing a uh, class 3 maintenance ticket. It also attracts crocs and skinwalkers which crawl through the ducts. I don't want to go back. A floor. Just everyone constantly fighting over whether Oscar or Ray. I'm just laughing at them all because Masato is the best girl. Decide to arm both sides. Suddenly it's actual trench warfare. Bayonet charges are followed by screams praising their respective waifus. It's a fucking bloodbath. Nobody wins and I have a floor to myself. Okay, stalkers. Let me tell you about one of my many anomalies in this place. This is just a scant representation of the few good things that rarely happen here. Be a younger minus 250. I didn't have much gear at the time. Threadbare gloves, a few flares, a Makarov with two mags, and a buckshot peppered leather trench coat. Things weren't looking good at the time. I was halfway down the stairwell when one of the O garage sublevels to a DIY floor whenever I encountered a group of Twingo posters. <laughs> Normally they're harmless, just replying to anything you say with ho 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 Twingo and waving a stale baguette at you. Not sure if the oil I slipped in earlier had anything to do with it, but just walking past them set them off. One of them whacked me in the back of the head and I turned and drew on them. They backed off, said they're only lying again in unison. A little perturbed, I turned around cautiously and continued down. Unfortunately, they followed me, repeating the same incident. Eventually, I just ended up being chased down to an elevator door. I got cornered and began mag-dumping into the fake Frenchman. I backed up against a ruined, forced-opened elevator shaft. I was down to my last few rounds when one tackled me. He got lucky. I didn't. Peace, dick. I thought as I tumbled down the open shaft. Then something stopped my fall. Hard. I think I fell through a grate. I think my pack and bedroll broke most of my fall, but the massive pain in my chest hinted at a few broken ribs. Wheezing in the pitch black, I rolled over and fumbled with my pack for a flare. Striking off the match top of the road flare revealed my surroundings in a dim red glow. To my left, one of the loaves of bread. Underneath me, a dusty, worn oriental carpet over hardwood. At my feet, a cast iron stove coated in dust. It was incredibly cold here, wherever that was. I loaded the stove with some tinder and threw the dying flare in. I almost thought I had heard the voices of several old women. As the dry wood crackled and popped, I laid down by the stove, cracking open my flask of vodka to ease the pain. No, this time there definitely were voices. This place looks like an old pensioner's house now that my eyes are adjusting to the light. Taking the saw back of my knife, I cut through the hard crust only to hear more voices. Suddenly, the room is cast in a bright yellow hue. Three babushkas stand before me, each of them aglow in a spectral yellow light that all look the same yet different as their forms never stayed in a consistent fashion. They all had different voices, yet spoke exactly the same as they hovered before me. Looking around the room again, it was lit and restored like some old grandmother was still living there. The figures were overjoyed by the gifts I had inadvertently brought them, and I was lifted into a velveteen chair t beside the table. Eat, eat, grandson, they softly beckoned, even though they did not seem to notice I knew none of, quote-unquote, them. A pail of butobrot 
finger sandwiches, canned pickles, and a tin cup of cold vodka appeared before me. Then we drank for health. The spirits began grilling me for information like old women do. As we began to talk, I felt my injuries healing. Over several hours of visiting the spectral biddies, our visit came to an end, and my wounds were gone. As I left through the old wooden door, I found myself holding a pair of knitted gloves. No matter what I do, they, no matter what I do to them, seems no damage, not to weather them, or even freeze my hands. Several other stalkers have corroborated with varying stories of gifts that they needed, or some items returned repaired. As far as we all can tell, it seemed to be some sort of X and CK experiment to contact grandmothers for lost recipes. We've taken to calling them the Maitre Nishka spirits. Has anyone else had an experience? Um, as somebody of Eastern Slavic descent, it, yeah, uh, Babushka will, will always take care of you. She's going to give you some shit, but you won't go hungry, and they really enjoy knitting. So that's a thing. Good story. Well done, Annan. B.P.O. Annan. Here reports of activity for the first time in months. Decide to investigate. Hear weird chanting in the room of reported activity. Open the door just in time to see a 30-foot-tall origami swan snap a paper wizard in twain with its beak. Immediately, advance tactically in the opposite direction. Bros, what the fuck do I do? Alright, lads, that's, uh, that's all I got for you this time around. Um, I hope you enjoyed the reading, and uh, hope you enjoyed the format. Yeah, if so, there might be some more coming from me. If not, well, hope you enjoyed the one shot. Uh, thank you very much, you know, and uh, I hope everybody stays safe in these insane times. And uh, most importantly, Ave Nex Alea. So guys, tell us what you think. I think personally he did a pretty good job. I do think some things could be ironed out a wee bit better. Um, maybe some of the narration parts audio quality but that's the type of stuff that does just come with time you know that's uh, experience you get that from mostly but for his first time going i think he did a very good job and i do want to do more threads like this i just feel this isn't this isn't me and megan's specialties you know i enjoy browsing k but i can only go on for maybe half an hour at a time before i just start getting jealous you know and i never post on or anything so it's not it's not a board that i myself um fully immersed in you know and i feel like if we're to do videos about different boards you really do need to be a part of the culture you know but yeah is this just going to be a one-off thing or are we going to continue with them i really love this thread there is more like it and i do want this to become a bit more of a thing because this is almost you know what this is to me this is like the cold shoulder but k edition and i love it i think it's really cool and i do want to do more but let us know down below it really is up to you guys. It's 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 always hard working out these things, and the only way to really work it out is with community feedback. But yeah, thanks for hanging about for this long to the outlaw. I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll see you next time.